The number of Americans who filed for unemployment benefits last week has fallen. New jobless claims dropped to 385,000. That is down for... Hello, today I present to you an extremely attractive application for music lovers. It's completely free. You can listen to music online or download unlimited music to use whenever you don't have internet. The powerful search function helps you find anything you want. Trust me. It's hard not to find what you're looking for because the search function is really powerful. Application download link is attached in the description of the video. I'm pretty sure you'll like it. Thanks. 15,000 from the previous week. Officials say the consecutive drop is evidence the economy and the job market are rebounding from the coronavirus recession. Last week's jobless numbers could be a sign longer term employment in the country is strengthening. For more on this, I want to bring in Lori Bettinger. She is co-president of Bank Alliance and former director of the Troubled Asset Relief Program, known as TARP. Hi, Lori. Great to see you. So what is driving this downward trend and who's hiring? Hi, Tanya. Great question, as always. I think we're just continuing to see that gradual recovery in the economy that, you know, we've been talking about really for months now that, you know, employers continue to add positions. We're continuing to see people come back to work, although those trends are maybe not quite as clear. But, you know, hospitality, travel, restaurants, you know, all sorts of different service industries, we continue to see them really looking to hire people and in many cases not necessarily able to fill all of their positions. But, you know, we're seeing this across the board. If you're talking about services, manufacturing, um, you know, you hear about logistics companies also, you know, looking for more and more people. So I think we have a lot of different sectors of the economy right now firing on all cylinders in this sort of perpetual um, hiring mode. And is this more evidence the congressional stimulus packages are working? Um, and at this point, what else needs to happen for pre-pandemic job levels to return? Well, I think it seems clear to me that, you know, this various stimulus packages are working. I mean, right, our last one injected almost $2 trillion into the economy across so many different areas, you know, whether it was education, local and state governments, direct to small businesses, you know, you had money going directly to restaurants. So it's hard to say that, oh, you know, we're not seeing all this stimulus drive, this continued growth in these industries and increased hiring. But at the same time, you know, COVID is still with us, you know, maybe a little more so than many of us were thinking a couple of months ago, whether we were expecting or hoping. And so there's still, I think, different pockets of the economy where you're seeing a lot of uncertainty that are potentially prohibiting us from going back to those full employment levels as defined by prior to COVID. You know, I think that the child care issue continues to be an issue for some people. Also, you know, a lot of the industries that I mentioned hiring, they need people to be on site. You can't be remote in so many of those jobs. And there are people that say, well, what if my child goes back to school and has to quarantine for two weeks? Am I going to be able to start a job and then immediately take time off for that? What kind of flexibility do I have? And I still think we see something of a mismatch between people who are looking for jobs and then some of the companies that are hiring. And that part hasn't smoothed out yet. And as long as you know, COVID's really part of many people's day-to-day -day existence. I'm not sure we can get back to that place where we were, you know, going into the pandemic. And is there a sense, uh, you know, to economic uh, sort of advisors or economists who keep a close eye on the temperature of the economy, is there a sense that with the Delta variant sort of getting a foothold, that that could cool off some of this, you know, economic uh, recovery that we're seeing? I'm not sure that there's necessarily a consensus that, you know, we're going to see sort of this sort of backtracking that we saw last year, because we're not hearing a lot of discussions at this point about, you know, shutdowns or closing businesses. Yes, you have some mask mandates coming back, but for the most part, I think a lot of businesses are still going full steam. But that said, and I think this is relevant for any part of the economy, you know, the financial markets hiring, when you have this level of uncertainty, I think it dampens people's enthusiasm, which you sort of need for this recovery, right? It makes people a little less uncertain potentially about returning to work. It maybe makes some different industries a little less certain about hiring back to their pre-pandemic levels because maybe they still see a little bit less demand. I know that, you know, we're even hearing that restaurants in cities where mask mandates have come back are seeing a, you know, a cancellation in indoor dining. And so they're starting to think about, you know, am I staffed correctly for that? So I think in a number of industries, as long as there's still, 
you know, with a Delta variant and this question about, you know, if you're vaccinated, are you still so safe? What happens with unvaccinated children? I think that uncertainty is going to, you know, definitely affect the economy, but I don't think it's going to be nearly as bad as it was last year when there were so many unanswered questions and clearly when we didn't have a vaccine. Right. So perhaps you're seeing like a little bit of cooling on the margins, but it's nothing significant yet, right? It doesn't feel like it's nothing. It's that significant yet. Again, I would say if all of a sudden schools start to close down again in the fall, you know, looks more like the 2020-21 school year, then I might have a different answer for that. Right. Hopefully that won't happen. It looks like a lot of the uh, you know educators are we're speaking not. to are pretty committed to keeping schools open this fall. So uh, let's keep our fingers crossed there. Hopefully well, smoother Bender, Thank you so much for joining line. us. That's Thanks so right. Much for having me. Thanks so much, Lori.